Well, ladies and gentlemen, a very big welcome to today's fixture. Tamworth against Chorling, and uh, it's lovely to see the sun shining as well. But also, a very big welcome to Jamie uh, from Macron, and uh, we do indeed thank you for your generous support that sponsored today's game. So, fantastic, a very big welcome to you and everyone else who's here as well. And uh, yeah, oh, look, that's the first time we've ever had a round of applause for the sponsors. That's a major landmark. <laughs> so, super, Michael. Welcome to you, our final home game of the season. First of all, thank you for the times that you come over before the game as well, because we know it's a very busy time for you, so we're very grateful if you're spending your time just for a few moments to answer a few questions. And as always, we start with today's selection. Thank you. Yeah, we've, um, we've gone with Jack and Goal. Back three, uh, Regan replaces Joel. Joel's injured, so Regan's come in on the right side. Uh, Jonah in the middle, Jack on the left. Rhys Sharp and Burnsy as wing-backs. Connor and Burns will uh, play central midfield. And then we'll play with two number tens in Daryl Knights and Michael Donoghue, with Dior um, playing down the middle. Super. So that's just one change from last week. Is that yeah. right on the stand? Uh, obviously because of injury. And, and and on the bench today. Yeah, we put Dan Jessup on the bench. Um, Sam Coulson steps up to the bench. Steph Morley's back fit. Brad Reed's back fit. And uh, they join a quasi Santi on the bench. And uh, Brad, Brad back from Stavridge. How did he get on there? Um, he tore his hamstring after 45 minutes, so he never played again. But um, he's been training hard, and um, just that fresh mindset coming back into training last week. His words were that I'll score the goals to keep us up, so uh, he's got to back that up. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. And so, how have things been in the camp this week? A little bit nervous? Um, no, I don't. I don't think they have actually. I think um, a few uh, fans stayed behind on Thursday and watched a bit of the training, and um, they. they there's bound to be a bit of nerves in there, but they weren't showing on Thursday and they certainly weren't showing again today. I think, you know, that the message from me to them was that it's not a day to be nervous and, you know, if, they, if they're not brave today, then they don't win the game. So um, they need to be brave today and, and, and stay calm, stay focused uh, and do what they do. But if, if one of them's off the game and they're not brave and they, they take that easy pass and they, you know, they play a safe pass instead of trying to break a line and break through the two tens, then... Um, if one person does that, we're going to struggle to score goals. If two people, three people, four people are, t are taking safe options, then we don't win the game. So it's important that um, the belief stays throughout the game. Since we last spoke, we've had two games. We had the FC United defeat, which was pretty devastating uh, Saturday afternoon for us. I I'm sure you'd probably agree with that, having heard your interview anyway. Mm. Um, and then obviously a far better performance at Kidderminster, where the luck was just... Totally against us, wasn't it? What are your thoughts on those two games? Well, I challenge you say it's a far better performance because FC United, they didn't have a shot on target until the 85th minute. So we were that dominant and I think it's the story of, it, of most games at the minute. I, I can count on one hand poor performances, um, whereas I need a couple of hands and feet to count the losses. So that's what's important. And uh, we're not taking our chances. That's, that's you know, it, it's obvious for everybody to see. We're creating loads of chances. We're dominating games, which we want to do. We want to dominate games. Um, so yeah, so the FC United game, one a mistake again that's cost us. I can't legislate for that. All the training we did, we've been in extra days, Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and it is a mistake and it goes in and it costs us and we're pushing for the game later on to get a second goal, which you know we had to, we had to try and get back in the game. So that's what that was. And then Kidderminster, again, Kidderminster didn't touch the ball in our box until the 25th minute. Um, one of the best teams in the league and, and their manager saying to me at half time, at, at half time, he, he couldn't wait to get in at half time, we should have been three or four up within the first half. He said he's watched um, five of the last eight games and how we haven't won four or five nil in those games is beyond him. He said his words were if we had their front three that we'd be in the playoffs. Um, but he wouldn't let me have them. <laughs> so, um, Probably a bit too late now. Uh, so, it, you know, on reflection, uh, you know, we, we keep talking about performances, but at this stage of the season and the situation we're in, performance doesn't matter wins matter and, and that's what we've been um, struggling with and um, like today I've just left a message with the with the team now that what a day to put all that to bed and, and against one of the best defences in the league that you know we a game to go running 3-0 up in the first 25 minutes what, what a day to do that and what sort of game do you expect from Chorley because they're fighting for boys themselves at the other end of the table where we obviously want to be yeah well I've just said to the lads there in the team talk again you know, as much as they're fighting for points, they're in the playoffs. So their fight shouldn't be as, as strong as ours. Like we've got more 
more to lose than, than they have. They've got more games to, to keep themselves in the playoffs and they've played Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. Now, they rested five players on Thursday, which seems to be the case at the minute. They, they rest five players. They lose the game against a, a rival, relegation rival, which is which hurts, but it's not their fault. It's, it's the league's fault and the, the fact that games have to be played Tuesday, Thursday instead of extending it or fitting them in other times. Alfreton did the same thing with Brackley. Brackley played Thursday night against Alfreton and rested five of their best players. Doesn't help us, but I'm not looking outside of our dressing room and my office for the situation we're in, So, um, because that's effectively why we're in the situation. So today, I've just said that I think it's been misconstrued in the press that I've said that nothing else matters now when it comes down to two games. Um, that's by no means undermining what's gone on. I'm very aware of that, and the post-mortem will come. Um, but it is straight shootout. We have to win today. There's, you know, so I, I can guarantee that we're going to attack. Um, we're going to go for it. There's a plan A and there's a plan B that will happen quite quickly if things go wrong. And we can't control events that happen elsewhere, like you say, with, with players being rested by teams who are, you know, playing teams who are around us who are our rivals. And that doesn't help us. So we can't control events elsewhere. But today is the ultimate was must-win game. It's like a cup final. <coughs> Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, the lads know that. They know they're in that situation, and it is like a cup final. Um, in terms of what um, what Julia offer us, they'll be very defensive. They'll play five at the back, uh, and they'll allow us a lot of space in front of their wing backs to cross balls in because they've got three giants at the back that will deal with crosses really well. So we've just been looking at how we can um, attack them in a different way and try and pull them, pull their wing wing backs out of their shape a little bit and try and get our our two little attacking players in, in and around their centre backs because they're not as good in a 1v1 situation so um, hopefully that you know the lads, the lads have got a plan we, we've got a plan and um, if that doesn't work um, initially um, I'm not going to be afraid of change it very early on in the game. Cool that, that's great to hear um, you know plan A plan B etc etc but when, when we started the season I didn't expect to be interviewing you or had you been Andy in this position. Um, fans talk about turning points in seasons and no doubt the, the sort of you, you'll be having sort of investigations and you know, looking at what went wrong. But do you see things as a turning point season where things start to go wrong? A lot of people talk about Stoichi leaving. Do you, do you look at things like that? Um, no, not today. No, I, I mean, I'm hoping today's the turning point. You know, to see, like, the nature of football is that um, I've said to the lads there as part of the team talk and um, you know how passionate I am about the club and, and about and about doing well for the club and I've just said that you've still got an opportunity to make the people of town proud, you've still got an opportunity to make the club proud because today if they go and do the business and they win the belief around this place is going to be phenomenal and I hope to God that that happens today because it just it just leaves everybody in, in a difficult situation, um, fans and players alike and, and then hopefully then we can go to Gainsborough and uh, and take 500 fans up there and, and be the biggest game in, in a long time. So, well, we're certainly hoping for that. And uh, you've talked a lot about the fans, perhaps a lot going next week if things go well today. You've talked a lot about the passion of the fans and how well supported you've been by them. What's your message to the fans today? It's the same as it's been. I mean, they've been fantastic. We're, we're lucky to have fans like, like them, you know, and, and no doubt at times when things do go wrong, you hear the one or two voices, but I think they're far more negative mid-season when we were mid-table they were far more negative they seem to have they've grown in stature and, and the, the noise and the support levels have been fantastic they've not wavered and I, and I can't thank them enough for that and um, it's not they've not had much to shout about and, and today I'm hoping they get something to shout about just you know just even one game um, but it's not just one game this is this is you know a massive game and if we win that I know that the, like I said the belief around the place will just will we'll just go up and, and hopefully then that just drives us all on to stay in the league which is what we need to do. And finally, irrespective of what happens in these next two games, are you still up for the fight for this football club? Well I think you know the answer to that. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knows the answer to that. I don't think that's in question. I you know I I a lot of people know how I work and I, what I do, how I work is at the end of the season when I look myself in the mirror I need to be able to know that I've given it my best shot and um, and, I, and I will be able to do that as we stand and I don't see me taking the foot off the gas anytime soon so um, you know I, I've moved my family up here I've, I've, I've lost a lot to come here as well um, and uh, it means a lot to me 
as you can tell. Fantastic. Mike, right, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, thoughts for you for today. Three points. Nice to meet you. Mike Thank you.